Uh, what can I tell you about? Yeah, it was the biggest yeah. challenge you faced in doing this. Well, I was fortunate enough to come into the project when there was a momentum behind it. So uh, my good friend David Jonathan has been developing this project for years. And um, he came in with this beautiful package and property. And over the last year, we've been able to get it all financed. And um, we've also started a new company called Volume Global, which is a tech startup. And we have the largest and uh, most technologically advanced volume LED wall in Canada, and the second largest in North America. Um, so that company is an investor, and also where we're going to be shooting this property. So it's cool. It's uh, sci-fi in front of the camera, and kind of sci-fi behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's leading-edge technology. So um, yeah, it's exciting to see you know to see your project coming to fruition. And I think it's also going to be exciting to see the making of it because we're utilizing the latest tech in AI, in volume LED wall technology, and combining that and giving the filmmakers a whole new set of tools and toys to play with to, to bring DS Prime to light, which maybe we could not have done in the same way years ago, right? But the tech is here and it allows us to have a lot of freedom. So. Very and I'm a sci-fi nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give us a little synopsis of what Venus Prime is? Sure, yeah. The Venus Prime is an adaptation of the Arthur C. Clarke novels uh, by the same name. So Paul Proust actually adapted the books, uh, wrote the books with Arthur C. Clarke. And I mean, at the core of it is a is human journey of a not-so-human character, a female, really strong female lead who's, you know, she's been adopted, uh, she's been taken into a special school uh, for training by her parents, and then she discovers that the school is run by these nefarious individuals who are plotting to take over the world, right? Um, and this is a dystopian near future setting, right? It's sort of a gritty version of our world now, 20, 30 years in the future. Um, but her, her, her makeup is that of technology, but also demigod deity, right? So she discovers that what they're doing is not something that agrees with her, but she doesn't realize is that she is the ultimate weapon. Um, so it's a story of her trying to figure out who she is, and you know, also how to navigate this new world and come into herself. Right? So I think, for me, sci-fi, you've got all the, the trappings of sci-fi and the technology and the setting, but there's always got to be a good story, and that's the part of this that's really exciting. Right? There's a really strong central character that's transforming the entire time. That's really attractive to me. And essentially, that's, that's it. So, imagine what you will of that scenario, right? Yeah. Yeah. All six novels will be inspired. Yeah, all yeah. six. But it'll be an ongoing series, so each season will be six episodes, right? So, it will be. Because they follow the books. So it'll be six seasons of six episodes. Yeah, you know what I think? Yeah. And so I think sometimes it'll be ultimately up to the showrunner and creators, David, uh, David Cormick and Paul, who wrote the original novels, to see if they want to extend beyond that. But right now, that is the plan. How much content you so, yeah. so we'll be shooting in Canada starting in January. How far ahead of you? Sorry, how far ahead of you with casting? Uh, there will be an uh, interesting announcement today at the panel. So yeah, we haven't cast the film uh, the series yet. So, but I think I, I'm positive we're not going to have trouble attracting the cast. Um, but we've got a surprising story for the lead, the lead character of Sparta. Right? Um, around her, there are a lot of really good characters that I think will draw all, all types of names. But we have a special plan for your cast. Is that a name you know? Keep keeping no names. Uh, Terrell, big gold belt media, how you doing? Uh, why is now the time for the television show? I mean, you guys been sitting on this for a while. Like, why? Why? I mean, prom, prom, shows prom. You want to do streaming as opposed to now? Uh, like I said, why, why is the, why is now the time to bring the show out? And are we going to be doing this week to week, or is this going to be all at once? 
Yeah. You mean like the world out of that? Yeah. We're, we're only going to be able to produce six one hours over the course of one year. So, you know, it'll take time for that to stack up to a traditional sort of TV cycle. Right? Um, they're, they're, they're big. It's a huge series. So we're talking massive production design on this, right? A lot of builds, costumes, you know, visual effects. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think the quality level is like feature film level, but we're breaking it into episodes for, for TV, so we literally just can't produce fast enough to do weekly reload of episodes. Um, but that first season of six, I think you'll see over the course of a few years, once we get to you know the 12 and 24 mark, then people who are, you know, whether it's streaming or a traditional broadcast, people will have access to it. But yeah, they're, they're big shows. So they will be produced quickly, right? Yeah. Really cool. But in terms of why now, um, I think the themes in the in the series are, are something that are so relevant for today in our world, just in terms of the political environment and also all the things that we're dealing with. And this series gives us an opportunity to delve into things that are current, but also use that framework of sci-fi to be future looking, right? In terms of what's going to happen to this and what kind of choices are we making? And I know like AI is front and center for so many people, right? And there's a lot of fear around it, right? But there's also a lot of excitement to get what it can do. You know, there's opportunities for us to play with elements and uh, you know like that in our stories that we're telling. So I think the time is perfect. And uh, yeah, we're ready to go. So appreciate that. Yeah. We're we gonna see a lot of the bioengineers that happen with Sparta. We're we gonna see that. How are we going to portray that? Well, the writer's room still has to get the rest of the scripts done. But, you know, it, it, that's the beautiful thing about having Paul Bruce on board. Yes. Not only having written the novels, but also consulting on the series. Is that, you know, he's a very credible uh, science consultant and scientist, right? So, whatever you do see on screen, we'll be able to hold water with the experts out there, right? And so, whatever we do do, we'll, we'll have to pass that, that litmus test, right? So. And when is this um, slated to start streaming? Well, we don't have a date for that yet. Because you're not having started your filming yet? Yes. But we intend on premiering the first episode, the pilot episode, next year at Comic Con. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'll be great. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the plan. <laughs> Do you know where it's going to actually land? Yeah, it's still to be. Yeah, it's, it's, our sales agents is really excited about the property, but for us as a company and good producers, you know, our, our strategy with this, which is better for us, is to wait. There's a lot of things to play, but we haven't, we haven't given the right answer. Uh, with, I mean, with so many shows, like, you know, getting canceled left and right within the first season, like, you guys committing all in on this, like, like, a, like you're going to have the whole thing finished, everybody's going to be contracted in to finish this, or is this going to be like, we're see how it goes as, as you film? I you know that's the part of the beauty of our situation with this project, is that we have a lot of backing, and the project is happening, and we don't have to wait for, you know, uh, the buyer to, to say yay or nay. It's hard not to get attached when you have such a, a, a fan following, for especially a project like this, yeah. and to see it get cut halfway through. I get so many shows that I'm watching. I'm like, okay, as they announced it, it's done within the first year. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, my time invested. So. Yeah. We've got a partnership with a Latin American company, and so everybody's already on board and signed, and so we're able to do this without having to wait for Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or gotcha. TV. So, yeah, so it's going to get made. Yeah. Excited. <laughs> it's exciting. But, but I think you brought up an interesting point. It's like staying true to you know what the fans want and also the original material. And um, yeah, I think we'll have to wait and see. But <laughs> we have the right people here to do it justice. So. Fans trust us. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Do you have an eye on things that kind of surround production like this, like, you know, in terms of licensing and, you know, comic books and all that, and action figures? Is that, is that something you can consider? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of our audience is around those elements as well. So, yeah, there's definitely some really exciting partnerships uh, in the works right now. And there's a lot of interest. I think it's a really big idea and there's a lot of uh, cachet. As we get through the design part of the, of the series, and we start helping those designs, and then we get closer to you know, closing our deals for distribution, then we can help tackle that. But absolutely, all of all of these things are, are in the future of the design. Will the series take a stand in pro or against AI? How, is that, how are they going to keep it? I, you know, I would say whatever topic we explore, it's in a, in a way that will pose more questions than just the answers. I think that's, in my mind, a lot of times we don't think that's, that's the best way. Right? We, don't, we don't need to hear people over the head with what we think. I think we can simulate discussion and debate and be a springboard for deeper conversations about issues and that's as a filmmaker that's always the most exciting path right because so we're working with the audience and we provided something to provide the audience yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It's, not, it's not a it's not a promotional piece for anything right it's a, it's a, yeah. a lot of people don't like it uh, elon musk we're worried about it yeah yeah no, it's like <laughs> Yeah, well, we had you know the big uh, WGA and SAG strikes last year, and you know it's caused a lot of disruption and concern. No, but you know we still have to keep moving forward. The cat is out of the bag, so at this point we, as a society, have to just figure out how we want to manage it. The cat is out of the bag. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Doesn't matter about it. Yeah, right. Doesn't matter what you or I decide. It's it's out. So it's happening. So as a society, we have to decide how we have to that, right? In my humble opinion. How did Jonathan Frakes come up with this? Well, David Parmican is the showrunner and one of the key creators of the series. He's also my producing director. I'm still on the project too. And I think Frakes is another one of those strong relationships that he has to right? And Jonathan. Obviously loves the material. He won't put his name to anything that he's not um, supportive of and in love with. And so that was a great connection that happened there. Um, and the agencies are always involved in these things, but I think they do a good job of you know, curating what it is that they show to their select clients, like Jonathan. It's that kind of thing. And is there anything in particular that you're most looking forward to coming to life to realize in the real world situation? Well, yeah, it's funny, like I, I'm the Canadian producer, I'm one of the Canadian producers, and I'm the producer that's boots on the ground in the region where we're shooting this. And I have to tell you guys, from being from you know, a smaller centre in Canada, my entire province, the government, the community, they're all excited. And I think that excitement is contagious because we're looking at a really prestigious IP uh, and then we have exciting, exciting stories, exciting settings, and then the opportunity to actually do the work to create and build this, bring this world into life using state-of-the-art technology. Like I said, sci-fi in front and behind the scenes. It's just not so many levels, it's really getting us excited. So. I'm taking it out of the way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.